everybody i hope everybody has been enjoying the session so far uh, i'm here today to tell you a little bit about burnout how you can recognize burnout how you can get out of it uh, just as a bit of a wake-up call because i'm not a java developer so if i would start talking about java here i would look like an idiot so this is the session i'm going with for today and to get my story across I, of course, want to share my story first. Yes, it's working good. So my story started with burnout in January of 2019, the pre-COVID times, as we would call it. Uh, that day, I went to my intake for my computer science degree in university. And at the same day, I found a very weird, almost like a nickel in my left breast. Uh, so what I did, I started to study computer science while also finding something in my breast that shouldn't have been there in the first place. I went to my first aid practitioner and he told me, oh, it's fine. I can feel it, but it's fine. It's nothing. But I told him, this is not supposed to be there. So I got an x-ray and that went from just doing some experiments and some research at the hospital to getting a part of my breast removed two months later. Meanwhile, I also had to keep up with university. I wanted to learn how to become a developer. I always was in IT, but I fell in love with Python scripting and I wanted more of it. I wanted to become that developer that could build anything and I wouldn't want to give up because giving up felt like me, uh, felt for me like I was failing. I couldn't give up. I wanted this so badly. I continued and I continued. I tried to keep on with the exercises, with the projects. Well, I knew I couldn't. I was very stressed. I was working on code pretty much every day when I come back from work. And that just isn't healthy. What I should have done, now looking back at it, I should have sat down and take some rest after I came back home from work or from my studies. I should have gotten enough sleep. I got home at maybe six after work and then I stayed coding to keep up with my university study until maybe two or three in the morning. That's, and then I would get out of bed at seven again to go back to the university. Well, that's not healthy at all. You shouldn't do that. And of course, asking for help. Sometimes there's more possible at your workplace environment or at your university than you might think. So that's also an option if you feel like you're getting overworked. However, I continued. I continued for three more months. I was very behind the project work. I was letting people down in my project teams. And I felt that I had to do something Yet I couldn't. So at some point I got a panic attack, a panic attack at the university. I went to my person that helps at the university where you have either mental struggles or financial struggles. And they told me, Lou, you have burnout. You need to stop with your studies right now because you need to get somebody that can help you. So I had burnout. I went to see a psychiatrist, uh, but could I have prevented this? Well, maybe. Prevention, of course, is better than cure. Most people recognize it too late, but maybe you feel like, okay, I'm about to get burnout, but I'm not there yet. But how could you recognize it? Or how could you prevent it? Well, you can prevent it by taking care of yourself. I'm not just talking sleeping eight hours a night, but I'm also talking about doing something fun with your kids. Go read a book, go to the beach, do whatever makes you relax. Also, setting boundaries. Tell your colleagues, no, I can't do this right now. No, I'm too overworked because I have this and this and this. Tell them what you can and cannot do. Same with go goes with managing your workload. Keep in mind, that you can only do so much in 24 hours. Make a list for yourself of what you can do. Make it smaller, not bigger. Keep yourself to that list. And of course, taking breaks. 
please, if you're working on something, whether that's code or writing or whatever, work for 20 to 30 minutes and then take a small break. Go on a walk, do something, but don't just keep working for hours and hours and hours. That will also cause burnout at some point. Now, the signs that you actually have burnout are very different from person to person, but there are things that you might notice that could mean that you have burnout. Uh, those are both physically, mentally and emotionally. They most of the time go together somehow. Uh, it's not just one and the other, but it's a mix. What I recognized by myself is that I had constant headache. And also that feeling that you get when you're scared or when you're nervous, I had that constantly, 24 seven. That's most of the time, it's a sign that you have burnout. Another thing that can be a sign of burnout is that you uh, get very sad or angry at every single thing you can be mad about. That's also a very big sign of uh, burnout. So what you should do if you definitely have burnout, if you go to some person and they tell you they are certified, hey, you have burnout. What you should do is seek professional help. That's step one. Go to your practitioner, go to your psychologist if you maybe have one and tell them, hey, I don't feel like myself. I think I have burnout and they can help you. At some point, I was at the psychologist for two times a week. That went from one time a week to maybe once a month. But you need that help because you can't solve it by yourself. Another one is that you have to take a long break. Burnout is not going to be solved in one day. It's also not going to be solved in one week. Uh, for me, it took six months to go back to work at university, but it can also take two years. You really need to give yourself the time to get back to yourself. And also consider a change. If you think that the cause of burnout is mostly your workplace, you might have to consider changing jobs. It happens a lot that you get burnout because of a toxic group, because of uh, managers that don't want to listen, because you have too much of a workload. You might have to consider either changing your position or get out of development and do project management instead. I, I'm just suggesting something. Or maybe even getting into teaching. I also see that happen a lot, that people go from working the job to teaching the job so that they don't have to do the job, but they can teach people about it. <laughs> so with that being said, I want to remind you, if you have burnout, that doesn't absolutely mean that you can never get back into society. It also doesn't mean that you're a failure or that you will feel bad forever. It's not the end of the world. You can get help, you can get better. Uh, by now, I'm actually graduated. I graduated two months ago. I'm the youngest Microsoft MVP, at least in the Netherlands and Belgium. Um, it's kind of like a Java champion, but kind of a little bit different for Microsoft tech. Of course, I get to speak to people like you regularly about my thoughts, about my knowledge. And I have two great jobs, both as .NET consultant and as a uh, university teacher to share my knowledge and my passion. So with that being said, I want to share you with you a quote that I found very inspiring about this whole talk, and I wanted to end with that, which is, tough times never last, but tough people do. So with that being said, thank you for your attention. <laughs>